tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, this is Maya and I want to tell you something about maths and about the user interface today. Actually the user interface part of this tutorial was pretty unknown country to me and uh, I found several things out which make working much easier. Okay, I want to show you something in the front window here. When you press Alt B you can toggle from one visualization of the background to another and I think the standard one is this one so let's stick to that one now uh, if you have somebody who is born in the year 2000 let's say this is the year 2000 here and this is the year 2000 actually it's the year to, uh, 2050 here that one and then uh, this is 2100. Uh, of course in the year 2050 he or she will be 50 years old so we have 50 years here and we have 50 years progressing in time here so that's his or her age and this is the year of the calendar. Now you already see while I'm doing this strange mouse thing here where is 60 50 or whatever uh, I want numbers on the grid and that's the first thing I'm going to show you. Display, top entry is grid, you go to the option box here and in the option box uh, you scroll down, it's not a very large menu anyway. You need the perspective grid numbers and the autographic grid numbers, we're in the autographic window here and you just click on this. If you click on a long edge you will see the numbers all right but they are all distributed on the edge like on a chessboard. So we apply this. So this is the year 2000, this is the year 2050. Now let's go to the curves and surfaces actually this icon here and when I press and hold the key X I can snap my curve points to the grid and I want to start at the very origin here. And now this person is born in the year 2000 and obviously when I for example snap again here and press enter I have that curve of his or her uh, life basically so in 2040 he or she is 40 years old pretty trivial you might think well yes sort of now let's create another timeline for a person who was born earlier curve again and maybe we go for 1980. This pre person is born in 1980. We again snap it to the grid and we create the same kind of curve. So it is always proportional to time and that's why these lines are parallel. Now when is the older person, that one, double age of the younger one? We can solve this problem in different ways but one way would be like this we make the younger one grow older at half speed that means instead of being in the year 2020 20 years old this person is in the year 2020 only 10 years old and now we have an intersection right here when we go to the curve node here we see that the rotation was set to minus 18.475 that's because we didn't do it precisely so probably it is minus 18. Now what is this exact point here? Well we probably see what it is. It is the year 2040 when the older person is 40 and the other one is going to be 20. If we have a different age, like a more complicated age, for example the older one wasn't born in uh, 1980 but something 83 or something, um, we have a, an intersection of these curves right here and we want to know where it is, exactly what time it is. 
and uh, maybe uh, let's put it here so it's more interesting what are the coordinates of this meeting point here and the trick is to find this out is to cut both curves using the curves cut tool I just cut these two curves now I have four curves that one that one this one and that one and um, now I create a locator create locator a locator is just a cross which sits there and isn't is not going to be rendered and now I move over here but I need to place the locator at, at the, this precise crossing part here and uh, since we've cut them I can use curve snapping now this is pressing and holding key C which toggles this icon here and when I bring it close to that curve I move my locator along that curve and here it stops I can do the same here with this curve for example close to that curve with a key C pressed you have to try it several times maybe now I land at the same position and it happens here as well from this side now here I find the locators data so it's 30 so 33 in this case this is the year 2033 when the the older person is exactly double the age of the younger one now I want to show you how you can grow a curve this person was born say in 1980 now how do we make this curve grow well let's have a look at the topology of that curve you see it has one span when you press the key F8 you see the, the points here we see four points because the curve is of degree 3 rather than degree 1 so let's recreate that I delete it and I double click here when you work with straight lines use the curve tool in a linear fashion rather than the cubic set, uh, version or Bezier version you can always go back by resetting the tool so I snap again with the key X and tack 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 like over here spans one and the degree one that makes the animation much simpler because I have to deal only with two points press F8 again I see the two points one is here and the other one is here now I can animate this point go to frame one actually I go to frame 120 or sort of and uh, I set a keyframe by pressing the key S and it lands here as you can see and now I go to back to the very beginning and I snap the point with the key X to that beginning here and this is the new keyframe now when I let the animation run the, the curve grows if I want to visualize that curve how do we go about it I did a couple of tutorials about visualizing curves actually we go to the Arnold section here in the attribute editor and switch on render curve and that's basically all we need to do we go to Arnold because we need a light sky dome light and now I can render this scene and I see my curve and if I want the curve to be thicker I select it again and change the curve width to 0.1 for example so it would, would be quite thick render the animation you have that short curve here and the longer curve there what we can do now is create a circle and snap that circle to the beginning of that curve here you can use curve snapping again with a key C a press and hold C you see it here in this icon and I move my circle close to that curve and now I snap it to the very beginning of that curve you see it sits here in the front window press and hold J and I rotate my circle 45 degrees which is now this is the that's the 45 degree thing now I select the uh, circle and with the shift key I select the curve and now I go to this icon here which is 
is the same as this one. It's called an extrusion. So I extrude the circle along that curve. That's what it looks like in this window now. And uh, of course, I have that growing effect with the growing curve. The curve is in the middle. And now I can go to the circle and make it smaller so I get a different impression of that. I can also go to the extrude and change the scale like this if I want to have this effect or make it smaller like this. The default I think is 1. So this is a way to rep make a representation of this growing curve. Let's just hide the surface, go back to that curve. And what I can do now is I go to Generate and I get a brush. It's right in the middle of this really long menu here. Get a brush for the paint effects. And here I can choose, for example, the flowers, which are uh, ordered by alphabet. The flowers, any kind of flowers. These, this is clover, which I actually quite like. This is the size of the flowers. I can paint here on the grid. This is what they would look like. And then I select the curve and I go to generate and all the way down is curve utilities and attach brush to curves. Actually delete that one. Here we have the minimum and the maximum clip and this is the way to animate it walking up that curve. And it depends a little bit on the stroke how many of them you have, but you can uh, actually change the amount of clovers here in the settings as well. A last thing I want to tell you is if you don't see the curves properly, let me delete this. This curve is quite nicely visible when you select it, but when it's n unselected, this dark blue is more or less like the gray of these grid lines here. You go to Windows, Settings Preferences, and here you have the color settings. And what you're interested in now is the inactive representation of the curves. You go to this entry here, and now you have objects. You open the section objects. Here you have NURBS surfaces, trimmed surfaces, NURBS curves. That's exactly what you want. And here you have that dark blue, this yellow line. So when it's deselected, and that applies to all curves here for the, to the circle as well. So uh, you have it all in yellow, you know, which is very good when you deal with that gray background and want to actually see the non-selected curves. Actually, in most cases, we're too lazy to go to these menus here, but uh, I just wanted to point you and point myself to the option which we have here. It can be used for the cameras, for the lights, etc. For the representation of the lights, of course, it doesn't affect the rendering at all. And with this, I leave you for now. Have a good day and till next Tuesday. Bye.